And well, mission of the day. Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, along with astronaut Nick Hague and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Kurbanov, have undocked from the International Space Station at 1.05 a.m. ET, which is 10.35 a.m. Indian Standard Time. And they have begun their 17-hour trip back to Earth. The fourth member crew expected to splash down off the Florida coast at 5.57 p.m. ET on Tuesday. Tuesday, and that's about 3.27 a.m. Indian Standard Time on Wednesday. Now, the exact location of the landing will depend on local weather conditions. Now, NASA and SpaceX are, have geared up for this much-anticipated return of the two stranded astronauts from the International Space Station. Sunita Williams, Butch Wilmore, along with NASA astronaut Nick Hague and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Gubinov, are returning with the Dragon capsule. Now the Crew-9 is expected to have, of course, undocked from the International Space Station. Now the two astronauts stuck in space for almost nine months aboard the International Space Station since June after the Boeing Starliner spacecraft they were testing on its maiden crewed voyage suffered propulsion issues and was deemed unfit to fly them back to Earth. These are the visuals that you are getting live. Now their prolonged stay was significantly longer than the standard ISS rotation for astronauts of roughly six months. to call station home, to live and work and be a part of a mission and a team that spans the globe working together in cooperation for the benefit of humanity. To our colleagues and dear friends who remain on the station, Alex, and Vapor Todd Grill, we know the station's in great hands. We're excited to see what you guys are going to accomplish and we'll be waiting for you. Now, Williams, Wilmore, Haig, and Gorbanov are on track to spend Tuesday morning and afternoon in orbit in the roughly 13-foot-wide gumdrop-shaped SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. Now, gradually descending, the capsule will carry the astronauts from the space station, which orbits about 250 miles, that's about 400 kilometers above Earth, towards the thick, thick inner layer of our planet's atmosphere. Now, of course, the, their ocean splashdown off Florida coast is expected tomorrow. Now, SpaceX capsule delivered for astronauts to the International Space Station early on Sunday in a NASA crew swap mission to allow the pair of stuck astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams, return home. All right, well, to discuss more and get more details on this exciting journey, we are now being joined by our Correspondent Siddharth MP on the phone line. Siddharth, this is this is a great, interesting journey. Tell us about how things will happen from now on, if you can. Well, this undocking itself is a process that takes a while because uh, both the astronauts have to be secured in their particular capsule, which is the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon, and thereafter the undocking happens, and thereafter it's a gradual process where the spacecraft moves away from the space station. It's exactly the reverse of what happened several months back when uh, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore talked with the station on their Starliner. So it's the exact reverse that has to happen. Both of them from their capsule will have to detach from the station, space station or precisely undock and then they'll have to move progressively away from the space station. And then it's at one point after they start circling the Earth independently that they perform what is known as a de-orbit burn, which is what enables their re-entry towards the Earth. Of course, this is a process that will take time. Approximately, for every you know time that they circle the Earth, it takes about 90 minutes or 110 minutes. That's how long each rotation around the Earth it takes for these astronauts. So, you know, how it feels like in the space station is you see almost 16 sunrises and sunsets every single day. So that's how it is. So they'll have to spend a couple of hours in space circling the planet. And then at the right moment, they choose to deorbit. And once they perform a deorbit burn, it so happens that the craft is attracted by the Earth's gravi gravitational pull. 
and they have to make a very precise approach of course a lot of this is very uh, uh, controlled by computers and a lot of this is precisely calculated well ahead so th- those are the least challenging parts but uh, this is a tried and tested maneuver and uh, spacex's uh, crew dragon capsule has been doing this for more than a dozen times so as far as the process of return is concerned it's um, totally tried and tested but of course this is how every astronaut has to return to earth after a space mission and as you had pointed out a while back it's the reentry phase which is very crucial where the spacecraft as it you know reenters the upper layers of the earth's atmosphere and the denser layers of the atmosphere that the temperatures on the spacecraft's external touch about 3000 degrees celsius so which is extremely hot and the kind of temperatures that are unheard of so at such temperatures the craft will have to completely bear this for these they have special tiles and special coatings on the outside to bear such temperatures and those are also the times when due to excessive heating and plasma the craft will not be able to communicate with earth so there is a sort of communications blackout about half an hour or 20 minutes before they splash down um, off the american coast so at that time of course it's going to be an anxious moment this is what all space agencies experience and then gradually once that's over there'll be aircraft tracking this particular capsule as it comes down then a series of parachutes will have to be deployed uh, to slow down the craft because it's a massive object which is free falling imagine a rock falling from space so it's like that it's a massive object that's falling from space so in a series there'll be multiple parachutes deployed and all these parachutes will help slow down the craft for a safe and soft landing on the water then of course a flotation device comes out and soon you have uh, the coast guard and navy and so on and several other agencies who are prepared to uh, extricate them from the capsule and then take them back to shores either on board a naval ship or a coast guard ship so there are ways in which different countries execute this so that's the brief overview of what we can expect uh, over the next say 12 to 15 hours right and it's very interesting because nasa decided flying the two astronauts home aboard the boeing starliner capsule they thought it was too risky and spacex came in talk about how spacex has become this really ultimate savior now uh, regarding this whole uh, journey it's about a decade ago that um, you know nasa retired in fact almost 15 years ago that nasa retired the space shuttle which at that point in time was nasa's only means to send astronauts to space and bring them back the reason why the shuttle program was cancelled was because the shuttle program was too expensive i mean a shuttle flight cost more than a billion dollars each flight and shuttle had done about 135 flights in the last 3 to 4 decades so the shuttle was a very reliable uh, option but there after the us administration decided that it was too expensive so after the shuttle was retired american astronauts used to go to the space station after going to russia and then traveling on a soyuz craft which is a russian craft but due to geopolitics america decided that look we cannot forever depend on russians to reach space so why don't we develop our own solutions that's where two companies won the contracts to develop such a solution one of them is elon musk spacex which at that point in time was a relatively newcomer and a company that was lesser known in this domain and of course the other was the giant boeing which has been an aerospace giant with a reputation for several decades and has been a predominant aer- aerospace player globally so both these companies were given the contracts and uh, both of them had to demonstrate that they can send astronauts to space safely to the space station and bring them back safely so it was spacex that stole a march and spacex proved their technology you know pretty much 4 uh, 5 years earlier so that was what ensured that spacex has a domination over this particular sector so in fact uh, today as it remains spacex is the only option for america to send astronauts or for that matter the western world to send astronauts to space and bring them back so if not for spacex the west will have to rely on russia or uh, you know other countries to send their astronauts to space so spacex has been the predominant player over the last 4 5 years right. boeing also has been delayed but boeing tried to you know prove their starliner it was during the starliner attempt that this entire saga unfolded and starliner was deemed unsafe for the return of the two astronauts so the only other option for return was right. to come back on a spacex ride okay well that that's a really interesting fact that you just told us let's also listen into what's actually happening the activity that's going on in oh, that yeah, place who is also observing this whole mission All right, Siddhant. Of course, this was, and it's really interesting. And we also know that the stay of Sunita Williams and Bill Trillmore, it was not really that long. It's not a record-breaking stay, uh, breaking stay. But somehow these nine months were so long that they, everyone was anticipating to just get them back. 
Yeah, indeed. So what happened was uh, when you announce a space mission that is just eight days long, and then it drags on for eight months or nine months. Obviously, there's a lot of agony and there's a lot of uh, pressure that's uh, that's building up uh, on the administration, on the space agency. And of course, um, in, in in common people's minds, it sort of creates a serious concern and worry that you know these people are stuck up there, these people are stranded in space, and so on. But as far as the astronauts are concerned, it's just an extended day at work, or rather, extended months at work. And in fact, uh, having spoken to several astronauts from different countries, I can tell one thing that um, the longer they stay in space, the more they love it. Because, you know, throughout the history of humanity, there's only a couple of hundred people who've ever been able to go to space. So they consider it a singular honor that they have an opportunity in their lives to stay in space. That's right. And, and that approach ellipsoid, them. once we get past that milestone will be something that we call the end of integrated operations. And integrated operations means that we are talking to each other on the big loop. So we did hear those communications back and forth. The big loop is essentially not only the crew on the International Space Station, the crew in Dragon, but also both Mission Control Houston and in Hawthorne. Uh, hence the name The Big Loop, because they're all working together um, to make sure that they have common communications during some of these dynamic portions of flight. So again, we are standing by for approach ellipsoid exit at 1024 p.m. Pacific time. And on your screen there, we are getting a view of Dragon from the International Space Station, now quite a bit smaller than when we just saw a few minutes ago, undocking at 10.05 p.m. Pacific. Also in the line of sight there, we have a small view of the Canada Arm, which is a robotic arm that helps do some maneuvering and, and is utilized a lot during spacewalks on, on board the International Space Station. So to recap, the hatches between the International Space Station and Dragon were closed earlier today at 8.05 p.m. Pacific, 11.05 p.m. Eastern. Since then, the crew has settled in and is working to take off their spacesuits for their 17-hour journey back to Earth. The joint NASA and SpaceX teams did, of course, pull go to proceed with undocking, and that undocking command was then sent at 10.05 10 p.m. Pacific, followed by umbilical retraction and hooks opening with physical separation taking place at 10.05 p.m. Pacific as the Space Station and Dragon were traveling 261 statute miles off the coast of Guam over the Pacific Ocean. Dragon then completed two of four departure burns and has exited the keep-out sphere. And we are now uh, just minutes away from Dragon crossing the approach ellipsoid to set the spacecraft and crew nine up for their path back to Earth. Again, Dragon is targeting to splash down off the coast of Florida in the Gulf at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, 5.57 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, March 18th, marking the completion of a long-duration science and research mission. Great views right now on your screen of Mission Control here in Hawthorne, California. All right, well, that was a, a recap of what exactly is happening, has happened. Uh, the undocking, of course, we see what we see on your screen is probably just a dot of white. But, of course, someone who understands what's actually going on is pretty um, technical when it goes. Now, of course, Satan, you have also been observing this very closely. Now, also, if you could just give us, like, what happens after they splash down uh, their health checkups? Uh, what about that? A long space day essentially weakens um, and changes the body a lot. Of course, these astronauts are very well prepared for it. They know the risks. In fact, uh, while they stay in space, each one of them has to work out at least two and a half to three hours every single day. And this is to ensure that their muscles and bones don't degenerate because what happens is that uh, when you're in microgravity, when you're floating around in space, there is no body weight that your bones and your muscles feel. So basically, they're not having any effort or they're not having to expend any energy, right? So what happens is anything in disuse loses its power, loses its strength, which is what happens to muscles and bones. The lesser you use them, the weaker they become. So this is the constant danger that astronauts have to deal with. So for this, they have to work out in a specialized gym on board the space station for almost two to three hours every day. And this is a mandatory requirement for all astronauts, which is why all of them have to be in the pink of their health to travel to space. In fact, these are among the fittest people on the planet or off the planet. So that's how uh, that is the fundamental requirement to be an astronaut. In addition to this, all of them are fed a special diet which is customized to their body's requirements and to their dietary requirements and 
nutritional requirements. In addition to this, once they splash down, the first thing that, that is done is these astronauts have to be lifted out of the capsule or helped out of the capsule because, you know, it takes time for the human body to adjust from what is microgravity or floating around in space and then to really adjust to what the gravity that we feel here on Earth. So then they literally won't be able to even get off their seats or move away from where they are. So they'll have to be helped out of their seats. There's going to be recovery crew who will help them out, perhaps carry them out and then extricate them from the capsule. And then immediately they're moved out onto a ship or a vessel where their medical examination and preliminary checks begin. And thereafter, there's a sort of cooling down period where for a couple of weeks, they undergo uh, several health checks and sort of the checks to ensure that they can reacclimatize to earth conditions to see if, you know, uh, they've suffered any health conditions or any risks or something of that sort. Because, you know, while all of them are experts at diagnosing themselves and they have links to doctors here on earth there's nothing like physically seeing a doctor and physically being examined and then to understand what your health conditions are so that is a kind of monitoring which is a mandatory procedure that they undergo and that's a couple of weeks long so they of course will be um, you know under treatment and monitoring for a few weeks after they splash down so this is of course the standard operating procedure for all astronauts irrespective of how long or short their mission is because of the unknown risks that space flight still holds all right, of course, that's really interesting. The more we get to know about it, the more interesting it gets. Of course, this everyone, who, whoever is like a space enthusiast must be looking at this very closely. And even if you're not a space enthusiast, you're watching this because it's the mission of the day. Uh, but of course, we'll be looking at how this mission proceeds, observing very carefully and well hope for Williams and Butch Wilmore to return back to Earth with the splashdown off the coast of Florida. Conducted while they were on board the station. In total, Crew 9 completed more than 150 experiments, conduct conducting over 900 hours of research. Following their splashdown tomorrow, some of those time-sensitive experiments will be among the first offloaded off the capsule and then returned to various research facilities across the country so that the science can continue. And in addition to that science, they also completed a few spacewalks, one of which was to actually swab the outside of the International Space Station for microorganisms to see if anything might uh, potentially be able to survive the harsh environment of space, which is pretty interesting. Uh, another one was a spacewalk to remove a radio frequency group, or the RFG. Uh, NASA astronaut Sunny Williams was able to successfully remove that, which, which was a big milestone for NASA.